Sauter's quality and savings. Country Cafe, Swiss Deli, and then on the other side it says uh, Dutch Bakery. This is it when you go in. One of the best things they got here is apples. And here they have uh, triple berry jam. And there's a lot more on the shelves of different kinds of jams. Black bean salsa. What is this table for? Um, these are the samples, like from, I think they start at like 10 in the morning and then till, they just put them away like three times. Oh, they just put them away. Oh, yeah. that's why I can't tell what it's for. Yeah. So here's a, a lesson learned. Come earlier in the day than I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. Now, what I like here is the uh, crisp and apples. These are all their own grown apples, most of them. And in the summer, they had uh, like tables laid out and they cut up all the apples. So, which is great for me because I'm always like overwhelmed by all the different kinds of apples. And I don't know what they taste like. I grew up with Red Delicious and Macintosh, and you know, somebody put some mouse in front of me, and I don't know what to do with it. So um, I decided when they had their sampling test in the summer, and I happened to be in the area, um, I decided that these were my favorites, Crispins. These are sweet and juicy with a refreshing crunch, ideal for fresh eating and cooking. So. These are the ones I like. And look how many they have. So then they've got, um, these are, well, Cortland. I, I did used to know Cortland. Uh, Gala and Fuji, those were things, honestly, we didn't see when I was little. Um, okay, I just want you to get an amp idea for how big this apple is. Look at how big this apple is. That's my hand. I've got, uh, I've kind of got a little hand, but look at, that's huge. This is just like compared to like another regular apple that you might know. I mean, is it bizarre? Now these are fresh from Florida, but I'm taking them because they're better than the ones up in the store that I got. I mean, this is the place to come for, oh my gosh, say a limited time tomatoes. I'm just gonna get one for home, I don't know. Oh, they had me a tomato sandwich tonight. I mean, you got everything. Look at this. Everything. This is an overview. There's the bakery. The deli. Cheese shop. Fresh homemade peanut butter. Smoked meats. And the candy shack. Over there's the book nook, which I love also. So, um, this is an idea of some of their jams, and one of them's called Traffic Jam, Bear Jam, uh, Strawberry Jam, but the jams in this place are endless. Let's look at over here. This is like jam heaven. You got the idea. Here is all the um, New York maple syrups and which are certainly on par certainly equal anything you get in Vermont. Um, pure New York maple syrup and 
uh, as well as honeys. They have local honeys here. Finger Lakes honey. Ooh, that one looks good. Orange blossoms, Dutch gold. And you know, it's always better to eat honey from your area because it's better for you. Over here, we've got uh, sugars, chocolate, molasses, flavorings, and oils. Now, a lot of stuff you just buy like this in the plastic bag. I've come here and I just get, um, not necessarily from this aisle, but I get like just bags of farina to eat. I think that's over here actually. Oh, here, uh, white hominy grits, your organic rolled oats, um, Uh, if you want to do things from scratch, this is the place to get stuff. I've got, here's I how get, they sell the flour. Uh, here's the semolina. And then up here, my one of my favorite aisles is Old World Spices. Now I like to use fresh spices when I can. But, uh like uh, your basics for um, basil, parsley, sage, rosemary, thyme, that kind of thing. Uh, but these are good. The sage is really good here because it's, it's just, it's, to me, it seems more intense than, um, than like your average McCormick's. granulated onion, ground cumin, now allspice, there's your ground allspice. This is my sage that I usually get. Uh, I like getting sage here a couple of times a year. I think it's down here. Oh, look at these. Thing of beauty. There's your coriander, your lemon peel, margarine leaves. Uh, really good. Um, actually, this is what I first had in um, the Queensbury Hotel in uh, Glens Falls, New York, is um, butternut squash ravioli with sage, with a sage butter on it, and it was to die for. So there's a lot of different things you can use sage for besides poultry seasoning. And uh, cook it, cooking it up in butter on uh, butternut squash ravioli is really one of the most awesome recipes you can do. There's what they call Grandpa Sauter's chicken coop. See that? And here's the eggs. Now the eggs are uh, just as expensive as anywhere else now. <coughs> The milk, they have upstate farms here for milk. And honestly, I think uh, upstate farms is one of the best milks in the state. This is gonna be so good. Here you go, look at this. Huge meat sale, three days only. Oh, look at this. This is only $11.55, 80% lean. Look at that. Oh my gosh, this is to die for. Oh, look at this roast, top round roast. Check out this, uh, check out these drumsticks. These drumsticks are bigger than any drumsticks you'll see anywhere else. They're huge. This is the drumstick family pack. It's only five bucks. And these are huge. These aren't, these aren't. These aren't your little legs that you get at Kentucky Fried Chicken or a lot of other stores. These are big. Look at this. Chicken leg uh, quarters, family pack, $8, right there. Look at that. There's what? Four quarters in there. Oh, just beautiful. Boneless center chops. 
ten ten dollars and sixty cents. And there's you know that's uh, almost almost three pounds right there. These are the smoked ham hocks. If you don't know the name, that John F. Martin, that's a well-known um, Amish distributor out of uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, I believe. Uh, I've got some of that John Martin bacon in my freezer right now. Here's where they do the fresh ground natural peanut butter. See, so you get a tub like this and they make it right here. And if you come in, like, well, uh, looks like the bread shelf was empty. Uh, that was 50% off. Oh, the cheeses. Have I even told you about the cheese curds? Um, just, oh, look at this. <laughs> Walnut Creek, that's, that's out of Ohio. That's an Amish farm out of Ohio, if you're not familiar with that, which, uh, I don't think people west of the Mississippi are familiar with any of these things, but uh, artisan cheeses. Just to give you an idea too of what's around here, if you don't look up, you, you'll miss the, um, the quilts and things that they have for sale. That's kind of um, made into like, well it's not a false front. Uh, which there's a name for that, but I can't think of it right now. Uh, they actually use those. Those are offices and stuff up there. So, uh, uh, there's bird things over here. There's all sorts of bird houses and uh, bird feed. Look at these. These are Yancey's Fancy. I don't know where Yancey's Fancy. Oh, look at Finger Lake Swiss. I can't imagine how that's different than where is Yancey's Fancy out of. Uh, it's out of Corfu, New York. So I actually don't know where Corfu is. <laughs> I thought I'd been everywhere in New York, but I have not. Um, these are just um, different kinds of salad dressings and that kind of thing. Did I get it? Woodside Kitchen. Where's Woodside Kitchen out of? Um, I do not see where it's out of. Oh, there it is. Ooh, Hefzibad, Georgia. Well, at least it's a product of USA because I don't think there's anything in here that you're going to find that is not, if it's not from New York State, it's from the United States. Ooh, hot pickled asparagus. I don't know if I want that, but old-fashioned peach halves. That's just a nice. It looks like you did them yourself, you know, in these mason jars. Um, Gold Rush applesauce, Macintosh applesauce. Oh, that's the one my mama likes best in heaven, I suppose. But she always liked the Macintosh uh, applesauce best, and that's the kind we made. We we were actually taught how to make that in elementary school. Um, I bet you they don't do those things anymore. Um, they're too busy trying to teach the kids that they've got to pick a different gender. Uh, pickled baby beets. Ooh, actually, I actually like pickled baby beets. I didn't eat my last jar of beets completely. I ate most of them. Um, I try to have a couple of red beets every day because they're so good for you. I'm gonna have to get me some of them. Okay, these are called Giano's. Giano's Candy Company. Oh, dark marshmallow, marshmallow. Here's the whole stand of them. And I wasn't that interested till I saw the dark chocolate peppermint patties. Yes, it is speaking to me. Okay, I might get just a couple of those dark chocolate peppermint patties. Um, maple creams. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know where these French mint. All right, well maybe I'll just try a French mint. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm actually been really not eating any sweets. Uh, how can you pass that by? Bone-in pork steaks, 11.36.
I mean, oh, look at that. That's only, that's, my God, that's, you know, less than five bucks right there. Uh, I'm going to be getting me some, uh, I'm going to be getting me some um, bone-in country style ribs. And um, basically I found that the best way to freeze meat is uh, with freezer paper. Um, it tastes better that way and what I mean by that is it preserves better. Um, I wrap my meat in uh, that white freezer paper you can buy it at almost any store. So anyway, wrapping, um, wrapping meat, white freezer paper and then you buy, uh, then you buy the freezer tape and it's like wrapping presents. <laughs> You just make sure that air, no air gets in. And I have found that the meat preserves better. Um, and there's no, you know, it doesn't get frostbitten. You know, there's no frostbite, refrigerated freezer frostbite um, and that can alter the taste, that kind of thing that you can get with the plastic bags. You know, um, plastic bags just don't preserve meat the way I think they should. So I buy, uh, I buy freezer paper and then I use uh, freezer tape and um, I, put, I just stick them on the refrigerator, maybe put the date on them. The other thing I use to freeze in the freezer is uh, ball mason jars. And I pretty much put anything. I got some, you know, leftover, I had some leftover tuna, tuna and macaroni salad. Just stuffed it all in my mason jar, put it in the refrigerator. Now, when you take frozen, anything frozen, you can put anything in your mason jar and put it in the freezer. And it's going to preserve everything better than if you put it in plastic. So, I got rid of anything plastic. I don't want anything plastic in my house. Um, I pretty much use ball mason jars for everything. Now, obviously, they can't go in the microwave. Um, so, uh, you know, you take them out and you put them in some maybe warm water, not very warm, but some tepid water, and let them sit for a couple minutes, and then pretty much anything that's in it is going to shake off onto a plate, and you defrost it in the microwave, and um, or you know put it back in the oven. Uh, you know I do that with my chicken and gravy, my stuffing, um, pretty much all in mason jars. So I think it's a lot easier. Ah, oh, here's some freezer paper that you would use. Now this is 1149, but that's 150 square feet, and that's that's gonna last you a long time. Um, and the tape should be here. Uh, I don't see the tape, huh? And that's what you wrap. That's what I wrap my meat in. I'm gonna take my meat home today. I'm gonna wrap it all in my freezer paper. Write the date on it. Put it in my freezer. And I don't have a big freezer because I just I don't like putting stuff ahead for, you know longer than three months or that kind of thing um, so then we come over here um, they have a local dairy ice cream called burn dairy here but they do have Perry's ice cream and I'm kind of surprised they don't have Turkey Hill because that seems to be kind of the preferred good ice cream in New York State but um, apparently not here now, in the bird area, I did show you a nut wizard one time when I was in here about a year ago. Um, this is the kind of stuff that you find in the bird area. Look at these bird houses. You know, these are all their homemade bird houses. They're just so cute. Look at them. Yeah. And then there's just a lot of um, nice things to decorate your home, and they're all uh, Christian, of course. Um. <laughs> Look at these. Look at these little birdhouses. They're getting any cuter than that. Uh, oof. Hello, Mr. Owl. <gasps> there's a seagull. I love the seagull and the blue jay. These are all birdhouses. Unique or what? Um... Oh my gosh, I didn't know they had drying racks. Are you kidding me? Oh, they're expensive, huh? This is, look at this, is $63.
you know, I had one of these that I threw out. <laughs> um, it was old in my house and it was rickety and it reminded me of days I didn't want to remember and I threw it out and then came the day I needed one <laughs> and I found out that wooden clothing racks are so expensive. <laughs> I wished I'd never thrown it out. So if you have a wooden clothing rack, don't get rid of it. Don't give it to the thrifty shopper um, or the secondhand store. This is $63.99. Uh, I got a cheaper one off the internet, I'll be honest with you. Um, and they have large ones though, which I don't know where you could get one of those. Oh, these are handy. Okay, I got to do some serious looking at this broom here so homemade soy candles uh that would be the one i was gonna get if i was gonna get one your lilac right there um i don't really understand about soy candles so i'm not gonna comment much uh but this would be where you can get gifts um there's some things that are quintessentially um associated with amish here um but all of this stuff, this is like, this isn't just your average, you know, place to waste <laughs> money in, in pretty and uh, stuff that's not utilitarian. Um, it's all Christian. It's, this is like going into a Christian bookstore or bigger. Um, so, I mean, these are all family-oriented uh books um there's some wonderful wonderful children's stuff here that is really oh, oh sh i mean didn't we all know a shadow of the barn camp when we were young hell yeah oh i probably shouldn't talk like that um oh look here's curious george probably the original oh so pretty oh my heavens the original curious george book this is before you know the climate change and political activism indoctrination uh, started appearing in curious george here's the hardy boys books oh, oh my goodness now i don't know if they are just is hmm why don't they have nancy true I hope you're not sexist. This is a little bit. That's a little bit scary. Oh. Um. Hmm. I'll have to ask them if they have any Nancy Drew. Why do they not sell them Nancy Drew? Oh, look at the original Dick and Jane books. Like, if you were, these are for great for homeschooling. Oh, I mean, I learned with Dick and Jane. I don't even know if they still use it anymore. That looks like my Katie dog. <laughs> Back when she was alive. And a ton of wonderful, um, a, a ton of wonderful Christian books. And, ooh, look at this. New Dawn on Rocky Ridge. Now these are probably, you know, like, oh yeah, I was gonna say, they're probably like Laura Ingalls Wilder. <gasps> The original Little House books, I read these. I, re I met a lady who was really obsessed with the Little House books and rereading them. And she was really, um, she was at the church that I used to go to. And she was really a rotten person. <laughs> I couldn't believe that somebody that could go on about something like that could have a dark heart, but she did. She was. Really, she, she was like um, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, and I saw her bad side, and she was not a nice person. Boy, it's weird how people are. Anyway, that's what it reminds me of, but these books, you know, most of us had, uh, most girls uh, had when we were young. Your little, your little house in the big woods, a uh, little house on the prairie, on the banks of Plum Creek. I remember when I graduated to that one. Uh, by the shores of Silver Lake, the long winter, a little town on the prairie. Oh, these happy golden years. I, I did not read that one. Um, so I know the last verse in this book was um, a verse that my mother liked very much. As a matter of fact, it made her cry. And 
It makes me cry now. Um, let's see. Here it is. She was glad that the cozy house and Pa and Ma getting choked up here and the firelight and the music were now they could not be forgotten, she thought, because now is now. It can never be a long time ago. But eventually we all find out it can be a long time ago. Um, wonderful Christian books here. Stories of Jesus, and you know things to decorate your. Uh, oh, that, I want that bear clock, huh? Uh, things to decorate your living room. Be still and know that I am God. Well, there's a nice poem. What is this? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Guard me, Jesus, through the night, and wake me with the morning light. Huh. So other people rewrote that. Now, the original one is, um, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Uh, if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Now, um, that was the original. Apparently other people have redone it. My mother redid it. Um, and so my mother said, I'm not gonna have my little kids talking about dying before they wake up. <laughs> so the prayer that she made up and taught us, or altered, was, uh, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Keep me through the starry night and wake me when the sun shines bright. So that was the, the, the prayer that I learned. These are nice. These are, um, oh, you know, what are those called? Aprons, that's what they are. They're aprons. And these are the nice long aprons. Uh, I have a nice um, apron that I wear, not decorated. It's kind of like a, almost like a green canvas um, that I wear when cooking. Um, I mean, they had a purpose, you know? <gasps> Look at this. Journey is a magi. It's a jigsaw puzzle. I'm not into jigsaw puzzles, but this picture is so beautiful, isn't it? Look at it. Oh. I would love to, you know, like, do that, start doing it around um, Thanksgiving. And they got lots of different so soaps. And some toys and dollies and that kind of thing. I'm sorry. And you're on camera everywhere, so you're not going to take anything. I can't imagine any... It's pretty really low to come into an Amish store and steal something, but... I guess there are those people out there. I mean, people... You know... I'm blessed to be able to get this food, but I'm, I'm trying to, you know, eat cheaper. Because times are hard. And so, that's why I'm getting a lot of stuff wrapped up in my freezer. Which is only good as long as I have power, but... Some nice chairs, they're probably handmade. Rustic straight back rocker. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Huh, oh, there's a the back end of a bear. And that's it. Uh, in the summertime, this is the exit of Sauders. They have a large selection of indoor furniture next door. And in the summer, they have a whole bunch of things for outdoors. I mean, they do it up there. You know, and um, there's like looking down.
the best thing is, you know, just to come here to get the fresh fruits and vegetables is really over the top. Look at the little Adirondack chairs for kids. These are all made by the Amish. This is, wow, these are nice. Look, oh, these are poly furniture. Ooh, those are nice. $285, those will last you a lifetime. Apparently there's a train nearby. A oh, pretty night here with the snow coming down. This is outside of Seneca Falls, New York. Uh, between Seneca Falls and Geneva, so, uh, well, between Seneca Falls and Waterloo, ultimately Geneva, they keep going that way. Um, and they do have a, a place where you can get food while you're here and sit and eat and um, get sandwiches, just basically sandwiches and soups. There it is right there through the outside window. And you eat here. One of the, oh my gosh, they even got a nice little stove burning there. Look at that. Come sit there by the stove. Have a sandwich and soup. And life is good, right? You're back there working and cleaning in the kitchen, the Amish uh, ladies. So that's our trip to Sauter's. Got quite a long ride home. You can bring um, insulated bags with you, which is, I bought some actually insulated bags here last year and to take all my food home. Um, you know, if you're gonna drive a couple hours, then, uh, you know, you've gotta keep it insulated and cold till you get there. I'd like to be on that train. I'd like to be hoboing it. Hoboing it south. 